Faith for Today with Colin Urquhart and Julia Fisher. exactly it is, where we fit into it. And uh, in order to bring some revelation to this subject, we're looking at the parables that Jesus taught. Uh, We're looking at Matthew today, chapter 13, the parable of the weeds. Yes, let's read the parable first. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven, or the kingdom of God, is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you are pulling the weeds, you may root up the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned, then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. Now there are some similarities between this parable and the one we were looking at yesterday, the uh, parable of um, uh, the net that was cast into the water and gathered all kinds of fish. Similarities, but differences. And Jesus does give um, a detailed explanation of what this parable means, and we'll come to that in a moment. Let's just focus on what he's saying. Uh, The kingdom of heaven is the substance of the gospel. The gospel is the gospel of the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, what Jesus preached was the kingdom of God, what he sent the disciples out to do was to go and preach the kingdom of God and also to do the signs of power that were evidences of the present reality of the kingdom. So this is good seed. Everything that, that Jesus says, everything that we do as we, as we speak the gospel, not promote the church but speak the gospel, is good seed. Not preaching man's opinions, but actually preaching the word of God, that's good seed. We looked last week at the parable of the sower. You see, the seed was the same on the path, in the rocky soil, among the thorns, and on the good soil. The seed was the same seed. The sower went forth and sowed the seed. But it was the different nature of the soil, the different nature of people's hearts that determined uh, what they did in relation to the seed. That which fell on the path we saw was the hard heart that resisted the purposes of God. Uh, That which fell on the rocky soil was the shallow heart, with a very very shallow um, acceptance of Jesus. uh, And therefore, you know, they they aren't able to walk by faith and to sustain a relationship of any meaning with Jesus. Then there was the divided heart, where people on the one hand uh, want all the good things of the kingdom, but are allowing all kinds of other things in their lives which choke the life of the kingdom. Then we saw that there's the good soil which brings forth the harvest. The good soil reproduces the life of the kingdom in other people. It spreads the good news, spreads the word of the kingdom. Now, uh, we, we read in Scripture that the whole world is under the power of the evil one, uh, meaning not that the devil is controlled in everything, but because all sin and fall short of the glory of God, uh, the person who is a sinner, as opposed to one who is forgiven his sin through Jesus Christ, is whether he realizes it or not, being controlled to a great extent by the enemy, by evil, by sin, uh, and uh, is therefore a, a sort of a captive of that. Uh, in, in other words, until a person accepts Jesus, the devil has the foothold he needs in a person's life. And of course, he is the deceiver, so his biggest deception is to get people to think that there isn't a devil, that there isn't a heaven, there isn't a hell, that there isn't a God, 
because he's always the one who is denying the truth. So people, you know, make these statements thinking that they're being very clever and using their their rational intellect to come to this conclusion, whereas in fact all they're doing is saying things under the influence of the devil. Now, the devil knows that wherever the kingdom, where the rule and the reign of God is established, when the kingdom is established in anybody's life, he no longer has dominion. The devil no longer has dominion in that person's life. He can no longer take control of that person's life in the way that he could before. Uh, in fact, he knows that if that new believer exercises the authority God gives him as one who belongs to the kingdom, uh, the enemy will have to release, relinquish all his um, influence over that person's life. So the devil is absolutely opposed to the gospel of the kingdom. He doesn't actually mind too much if people play at church, but he really, really knows that his time is numbered in anybody that is living the life of the kingdom and exercising the authority of the kingdom. So wherever the kingdom is being established, the enemy always wants to try to sow others among the people that belong to the kingdom to really sow confusion and uh, try to upset what it is God is doing. Now, if you look at the New Testament, you see that there were false apostles as well as the true apostles. There were false prophets as well as the true prophets. These false apostles, false prophets, preached what Paul called another Jesus. This is all the work of the enemy. This is the work of the deceiver. This is uh, because even the devil himself appears as an angel of light. He appears as one who will give light, whereas in fact what he does is spread darkness. So you get these false prophets who come in without any real accountability to anybody and make all kinds of judgmental statements that destroy and pull people down, whereas in the New Testament, prophecy is always to build up and to encourage. So they make these statements and, and actually sow a lot of confusion and undermine faith in the lives of people. So in other words, it's an, ine an inevitability that where the kingdom is spreading, there is going to be opposition of this sort. Yes. Now, of course, when this happens in churches where people don't have any real revelation of the kingdom, they don't have the discernment to understand what's happening. So they welcome people that really are ambassadors of the enemy, not of God. They will welcome all kinds of crazy things. And you sometimes hear churches going off and some kind of tangent right away from the word of God. They no longer believe what the word of God declares, but they believe something else altogether. Uh, it may be to do with doctrine. It may be to do with lifestyle. But it's something that has come in that actually opposes what the word of God says. So you know, well, the one behind that is the enemy. Now, the interesting thing you see in this parable is um, that when the servants come to the master and say, you know, where have all these weeds come from? In other words, why don't we have a pure church where everybody is absolutely on fire with the gospel of the kingdom? Uh, Jesus said, well, an enemy has done this. There are still people here uh, amongst you that are the tools of the enemy. They are still under the influence of the enemy, of the devil. So the servants say, well, shall we come and rip them out? Uh, and, and said, no, no, if you do that, you may damage some of the goods, good crop. Because, you see, not everybody understands. Not everybody has the revelation. Not everybody has the discernment. But what Jesus does promise is that they will grow together until the harvest time. Now, this is where we get the similarity to the parable we saw yesterday. But at that time, uh, the harvesters will come and collect the weeds, tie them into the bundles and be burned. But the good weed will be gathered into his barn, will be taken to be with the Lord in his glory forever. Now, let us just read how Jesus explains all this in the explanation in verse 36. Then... Uh, he left the crowd and went into the house, and his disciples came to him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. 
He answered, The one who sowed the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed stands for the sons of the kingdom. That's what we're all to be, you see, sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. They will throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. He who has ears, let him hear. You see, in these parables, Jesus is warning of the reality of what we call hell. What does he mean by fiery furnace, weeping and gnashing of teeth? Well, he means that there will be unending mourning and sorrow in those people's lives that they did not live for the glory of God when they had the opportunity. And it means that there will be everlasting torment, really, for them because of that. The torment of being denied what they could have had if only they had embraced the Lord Jesus Christ with faith and love during this life. So there will be no conning God. He will be able to discern exactly what is in the heart of everyone. You've been listening to Faith for Today, presented by Julia Fisher. This program is sponsored by Kingdom Faith. For further information, visit our website, kingdomfaith.com. 